first to him is his 346. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 29. And we shall speak it responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. Psalm 29. <coughs> Cry to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Must cry to the Lord, glory and strength. Must cry to the Lord, according to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God
Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. May all who are baptized in his name, faithful in their calling, as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord comes from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A rattle together. Praise the Lord of all nations, extol him all peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name, and bring an offering and come into his courts. Our epistle comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, in order that the body of sin might be brought nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again, that no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. And please, uh, please stand. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness 
and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem was going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came out from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe with the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
life to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is going to be a fairly short sermon. I, I know it's not what you're used to, but, uh, but I've spent some time trying to refine it uh, and distill it so that it's just a short sermon. So if you need a copy of it, do take it back if you like it. But uh, do you know that many Lutheran pastors carry a stopwatch to any baptism? Well, the reason is they want to time how fast sins are washed away. There was also the story of Baba, who wrote in this CV, in his, in his resume, that he knew every man in the world. And this man said, okay, who all do you know? He says, well, I know the presidents, I know all the prime ministers. And he says, uh, this man asked him, he says, do you know the Pope? He says, yeah, the Pope baptized me. And everyone's kind of, okay, well, let's go to Vatican. And so they off they go to Vatican, and uh, his manager standing in the crowds, so you know how the Pope comes out of the balcony and gives his visitation to the people. And so, in a little while, he sees Baba and the Pope standing in the balcony. And now this man really faints, because the people start asking, who is this man with Baba? You get it? There's a lot of dark humor there, because people who don't follow the faith sometimes are lost to the world, they are lost to God, and they lose favor both in the eyes of God and men. And such is the condition of the head of the Roman Catholic Church today. But jokes apart. Now we know that wonderful, uh, the sermon is titled Baptism, of Baptism. Now all the faithful souls over here would recall that the wonderful grace of God bestowed to you in holy baptism. St. Paul writes in Titus, he says, Baptism is the washing of regeneration. One who has been washed is not held both body and soul under the carnal nature, but is born again of God through the water and the spirit. And such is a son, a daughter, and heir of eternal blessedness. And the eternal Father at the baptism of Christ declared, just as was read a little while ago in the Gospel of Mark, he says, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And therefore, believing souls, you have all received an adoption as the Son, as the daughter of God in baptism. You receive a regeneration. As at the creation of the world, the Spirit of the Lord moved over the face of the waters, so in baptism, the same Holy Spirit is rendering an efficacious regeneration. And that's why Lutheran pastors carry a stopwatch at baptism, because that's how quickly your sins are washed away. See, in Genesis, again, we heard about the separation of light from the darkness due to the movement of the spirit. And again, we hear of the separation of the children of light separated from darkness. Baptism is that regeneration when you are separated from those who are of darkness to become the children of light, the children of the day. And even St. John talks about it in his gospel. He says, this essential difference is that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not know of it. The light that is coming into the world is indeed here. It is here to make us children of the light, children of the day. But we know there are foolish souls out there that have a lot of tinder in them. They have doubting, soulish ways that clings to, to them. Sometimes, Links to us as well. When I earlier said that the no longer is the body and the soul held under its carnal nature, you may have wondered. Because you often see your own flesh ruling over your body. The oldness of the flesh prevailing over the newness of the spirit. 
And have you ever wondered why these things happen? Could it be that we have not completely understood the power of baptism? Again, our soulish ways, in the first place, force us to make an opinion. And any opinion that is made which is of human construct, it not only must be challenged, but it also must be repented of. And so our soulish ways make an opinion that we can blot out, we can put away our sins by making satisfaction for them. And that's the error of the Roman Catholic Church. That you can make satisfaction for your sins by doing some good work, doing some penance, going on some pilgrimage, or praying to a certain saint because you have not understood baptism. You look at baptism as if through the rear view mirror of your car, as if baptism was something that happened to you way back in the past, and it no longer holds good. And you're driving your car so fast that you want to get away from it. You see, this is often the case. Because from your very beginning, when you were still a little child, you were, your parents impressed upon you, society told you how you must be independent, how you must work hard to attain fruits of, well, this worldly fruits actually. But you think you can transfer all of that, now we don't, we don't say don't work hard, work hard. But don't transport the worldly things into things that are spiritual. And this is often the case that our flesh likes to work hard to attain something. But when it comes to baptism, it's not your work. It's the work of God. You see, when you come to doubt that somehow by some sin that you did, you lost the grace that was given to you in baptism, soon you would have fallen into error and this baptism will profit you no more. So be on the guard. If you are a comfortless soul, guard yourself from this error. Find comfort that when you fall into sin, then you must remember your baptism. Because in baptism, by the flood by whose washing, you have received the garments of salvation and now you're spotless and shining and God does not consider your former sins. But also in the second place, it's not just our soulish ways. Remember that we are quite witless. There is a devil that prowls around. And one of the major things is to attack your faith. And he uses an old trick. He uses it again and again until he's convinced you to doubt God's word. Remember back in the garden, he said, did God really say did God really say baptism now saves you he makes you doubt he makes an attack on your faith it makes an attack on the simple thing that people consider oh baptism no 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 baptism is a great thing and so all of you who have received it then you are forgiven souls and you know how holy baptism saves you by the washing of sins. Now it's true to speak very plainly. It is one thing to, to receive the forgiveness of thing, sins, and it's quite another to put them away or to drive out sin. The forgiveness of sins is obtained by faith, but to drive out sin is to exercise ourselves against these many troubling sins that plague us. And we contend with them till the end of our life. But finally, when we die, only in death is this sin 100% destroyed. But consider this. The forgiveness and the driving out of sin is the work of baptism that is happening. As long as you believe that God is not willing to count your sins against you, your baptism is enforced. Your sins are forgiven, although there may be many. You see, what follows in life is the driving out of sin, 
and it is driven out by two methods. You all know it. Suffering and death. So that in, that in baptism, its remembrance and the counting of its many benefits, all suffering and finally death is profitable to man. It is helpful in keeping you and I on this straight and narrow path, the way of the cross, in following after our Savior's footsteps until we reach Calvary, until we are washed by the water and the blood, a holy bath and a holy meal for the renewed soul. But what about the proud soul? You see, the water in one way saves, but the water prevents and it also destroys. As an example, I present to you the case of Pontius Pilate. It prevented from washing away the guilt of crucifying the Lord. When he could have done good, the same way it destroys. Remember the, the armies of Pharaoh, how they were swept away, perished in the Red Sea while the people of Israel caught, crossed over on dry land. Or again, in Genesis, how the world is destroyed by flood. So the proud souls, the water prevents from working out its righteousness and it also destroys. But anyone who is an expectant soul, the Blessed Holy Trinity is present with the water and the word. The word of promise that is united to the element of water and so faith receives the grace of the Heavenly Father who adopts us. The merit of the blessed Jesus Christ, the Son who cleanses us and the working of the Holy Spirit that regenerates us. And so as we understand the foreshadowing of the waters as they act as a primeval throne on which the Spirit of the Lord hovers, First, to bring up our creation in the Genesis account and then in the story of the flood. See how wonderfully Noah still preaches to us about baptism. As the waters roll over the earth, there were left eight souls in all, saved from the wrath of God. And the waters had covered the earth in flood, just like baptism is a spiritual flood. Now remember the two birds that Noah sent out. The foul raven never returns, but the dove, the Holy Spirit, returns with an olive branch. That is to proclaim peace and quietness to a weary soul. In the Old Testament they would say, Shema Israel, hear, O people of God, the Israel of the New Covenant, remember that in the grace of your baptism, you are provided with a grace which is unlimited. It is ever flowing. Not to practical matters. We find many people who want to become righteous or they would like to become more righteous than they were the previous day. And I tell you this, there is no shorter way apart from your baptism and the work of baptism. And the work of baptism is this, it is suffering and it is death. Unless you're willing to accept this, you will fail to receive the righteousness of God. Rather, you will try to earn your own righteousness. You will fall into an error both of the understanding of baptism and how baptism accomplishes it in your life. You see, baptism is this most sublime work of God in our lives through baptism. And it is corrupted by wrong intentions of trying to earn our righteousness and poor teaching and understanding. So, baptism, the work of baptism happens in two ways. It happens in suffering and finally at your death. And for that reason, God has instituted many estates, many vocations, some of us to be in marriage, some of us to be clergy, some to be rulers, some to be parents, grandparents, children, and to all God has commanded toil and labor in righteous vocations. That through them we may kill our flesh, that we may accustom it to death, that we may present our bodies a living sacrifice. 
that when we have toiled hard enough and found no comfort, we may look to the Fa'at and say, this is where my comfort lies. That somehow our endless striving will end, that we will start seeking a different love, that we will lay up treasures in a different place that cannot be destroyed, that cannot be stolen. Now, when you are in your baptism, your flesh is no longer timid. It does not shrink away in horror when it is contended with death and the weight of an eternal life. The ever faithful are not afraid of death and neither do they melt away under suffering. So, blessed souls, all these exercises, toils and sufferings are not measured by the number of greatness but that in the midst of these all, you remember your baptism. So here, my precious souls, my dear children, in this holy washing, we have the same access, we make the same vow, that we slay all sin by the work and grace of God in our lives. And to God alone, in whose holy name we are all baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves as clay to the potter. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray for the holy people of God in Christ Jesus and for all the people of God. Heavenly Father, you revealed your Son in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, bless all places where your people teach and learn, by teachers and students that together we should marvel at your creation and appreciate the depth of your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, grant that all who are baptized into Christ will receive the boldness of your servant John to lead faithful in your lives in this world, ever mindful of your promised heavenly inheritance. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Lord, your Son Jesus is the Christ and the true King of this world. Grant great humility to the rulers of the nation, especially to Charles our liege, to Mary our governor general, to Justin our, pri our prime minister, all those in authority over us, that they would submit to the preaching of his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of your holy people under their dominion. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, in any need of comfort, especially for all those for whom our prayers have been sought. Colin, Linda, Patrick, Rosie, Jordan, and Jose, Ivan and Putin, Nora, Julia, Nathan, Robert and Helen, Marilyn and family, Elfie, Ashrifa, Liz, her, Judy, Annie, Renata, Les, Lynn, Joanne, Bruce, Lorna, Colleen, Emma, Itana, Renata, Jack and Shirley, Mitch, Pastor James Lou, Richard, Beth's mother Lee and Aunt Alice, Sonia, Ruth, David, Gail, Rose, Fraser, Bev, Alpha, Pastor Bars, Renee, and all those we name now in the silence of our hearts. including these, watch over all expectant mothers and their children, that they may have safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, in holy baptism, you have opened the heavens to your children. Grant that all those baptized into your Son will worthily receive the heavenly feast of his body and blood for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. 
Almighty Father, as your Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep, you uttered your word and the world was created. In the waters of holy baptism, you have spoken our names and declared us righteous. You have drawn us to Jesus, the light of life, and saved us. Let his light now shine through us, that others may see our good works and give glory to you. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one more, now and forever. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of you. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 